Amen. Now, for those of you who were here, you know that last Sunday was an exciting Sunday. It was Family Celebration Sunday. We had some baptisms. We honored our graduates. And we had some cute little babies up here, and the parents were dedicating to them to the Lord. It was just a wonderful Sunday, and on top of all of that... It was also a celebration because last week was Pentecost. It was the church's birthday. And it was on that day many, many, many years ago that all of the followers of Jesus Christ were gathered together in a big room. They were gathered together in the city of Jerusalem in an upper room, a room that was big enough uh, to hold them all. And they gathered there to pray and they gathered there to wait. But what exactly were they gathered for? What were they waiting for? Well, the answer to that is found in our Bibles. Uh, so turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Acts uh, chapter 1 real quick. We're going to be looking at verses 4 through 14. Listen to God's Word. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up at heaven? This same Jesus who has taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. You see, on the day of Pentecost... All right, fast forward several days. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers were gathered together because of what we just read in the text. Jesus gave his followers two final commands before he left this earth. Number one, he told his followers not to leave Jerusalem until they had received the Helper, until they had received the Holy Spirit. And then number two, he told them that after they received the Holy Spirit, after they received power, they were to be his witnesses. They were to be his ambassadors. They were to be his representatives. They were to be his body. They were to be his church. And they were to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the localities around them, to the region, to the nation, and to the ends of the earth. Well, church, what happened on that day all those years ago forever changed this world. That was the day that changed everything. The Holy Spirit came down and the church was born. That was the day that it all changed. We are all here today as Christians because of that day. We are here today because the Holy Spirit came down, the church was born, and ever since that day, the church has continued to grow, the church has continued to develop, the church has continued to mature, the church has continued to flourish. Holland Baptist Church is here today because the Holy Spirit, as promised by Jesus, came down from heaven to dwell in the hearts of all those who have been born and will be born again. He, he came to earth. All those years ago, and he didn't come down to check on things. He didn't come down for a visit. He didn't come down for a vacation. He came down to stay. He came down to live. And that means that the same Holy Spirit that was received or resided in the first generation of Christians resides in the Christians of today. The same power, the same Holy Spirit that was in the early church is in the church today. He still remains and enters each and every one of Jesus' followers today. Now, last week we looked at Acts 2. 
And we've talked about how the Holy Spirit makes such an impact in the lives of us Christians. I talked about four ways that the Holy Spirit will change our lives as individuals. All right, We learned that first of all, the Holy Spirit will transform you into a new person. Second of all, we learned that the Holy Spirit will lead you into making a Christ-like impact in the lives of others. The third thing we learned was that the Holy Spirit will inspire you to proclaim or share the good news of Jesus Christ to those around you. And lastly, we learned uh, that the Holy Spirit will compel you to be active in a local church and grow as a disciple. So so last week I talked about how the Holy Spirit coming down changed everything in the life of individual believers. Well today and, and next Sunday we're going to be looking at the same text and I want to share with you what happened collectively to Jesus' followers when the Holy Spirit came down. I want to share with you how the Holy Spirit impacted the church, the community, the body. I want to share with you four amazing truths about the impact that the Holy Spirit has in the church body. All right, I want to share with you how the Holy Spirit coming, came, coming down changed everything. And yes, these points, some of them are going to sound familiar, all right, because it's from the same text. And we were looking at it from individuals' uh, context, and now we're looking at it from the context of the collective, all right? Now, as you listen, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is the same today as He was back then. He has the same purpose He has the same ministry, he has the same mission, and he's doing it in the same people, the church, all right? Different people, but he still operates the same way. He operates in the same place in the body of Christ. So the same way he moved in the first church, he will move in today's church, amen? He's not gotten weaker. He hasn't changed his mind. He's not just less in the world. He is still here, just as powerful, just as much God, and he's doing the same thing. So as members of the church, as the people of HBC, if we are truly saved, if we truly have the Holy Spirit in us, then these four truths will be found in us and collectively as our congregation as a whole. All right? And what are the four truths? Well, here it is. The church will consist of people who have been transformed, all right? So number one, the church will will consist of people who have been transformed. Number two, the church will impact its community. Number three, I'm excited again this one next week, the church will make the main thing the main thing. And then fourth and last, the church will grow. And we're going to talk about the several different metrics of church growth, all right? Now, Acts 2 shows us That if a church is filled with the Holy Spirit, then these four truths will be evident in the church body. So this Sunday, we're going to look at these first two truths, and then we're going to finish up next week. All right, so please turn with me in your Bibles again. We're going to be looking in Acts 2. We're going to be in the next couple weeks, and then we're going to move on further in Acts 2. But this week, we're going to be looking at the first 13 verses. Now, as I read this amazing passage... We discover what happened when the Holy Spirit entered the church. What happened when he entered the assembly. What happened when he entered the disciples. And we discover then immediately what the Spirit-filled church did. And in reading this, as in observing this, as in marking this down, we know how we should be living and what we should be doing as a church. So listen to God's word. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sign from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I want you to notice here that when the Holy Spirit came down upon the Christians who were gathered in that upper room, there was an immediate change. Their lives instantly became different. After that meeting was over, the assembly didn't go home 
with their life unchanged, right? It wasn't like they all dispersed and they started walking back home and they were like, man, you know what? That was pretty crazy today. You know, hey, church was, was pretty good today, man. That was an interesting experience. Yeah, what, what was so impactful to you? Man, I was really, when that, that wind came in and blew all the windows in and the, the Russian wind, I thought it was a tornado there and I pulled up my weather app, but we were good, you know, and, and you know, that, that was kind of crazy. And the other guy wasn't like, man, I, I was freaked out when I saw everybody's head look like it was about to catch fire, right? But then I realized it was on my head too, right? And, and, and I thought that was, that was pretty cool. They didn't just talk about this and then say, you know, let's go get some lunch, right? And the pastor better deliver next week too. You know, I better have that same experience that I had this week. No, they didn't leave unchanged. Their lives instantly became something different. They were transformed. Now, they didn't miraculously transform into the perfect image of Jesus, right? They still had sins. They had still had struggles. They still had a way to go. But the point is they were instantly different than when they were before they knew Christ. They were instantly transformed, all right? So the Holy Spirit, and why is that? It's because the Holy Spirit brought with him some transformative power. And the followers of Jesus were transformed, they were empowered, and they were changed. And that brings us to the first truth that I want to share with you today. Number one, the church will consist of people who have been transformed. All right, let me tell you some truth that you will not hear in a lot of churches, and that is this. If you are truly saved, if you're truly regenerated, if you're truly born again, if you truly have the Holy Spirit inside of you, He will transform you. Now, every church or most churches know that, but a lot of them won't communicate that well. They don't talk about or focus on the transformation. I'll tell you why. So many churches around are, are struggling just to survive. So they're like, I'm not going to talk about expectations. I'm not going to talk about accountability. I'm not going to talk about, hey, you've been coming to church 20 years. How come you haven't transformed? How come you haven't looked more like Jesus? I, I, we don't want to upset anybody. We'll take anybody. I don't even care if they believe in Jesus. We just need somebody to cut the grass and teach Sunday school class. You know, if they believe in Jesus, that's good. But we just are so, we just need to pay the bills and we just got to get these few people in the doors. And they're so stressed with surviving and keeping and the doors open, they're, they're not communicating the truth that there should be change. On the flip side, you have so many of the big churches, right, that are that are got smoke and, and mirrors, and they start off really good with the purpose of we're going to most look like the world so we can get the biggest group of people, the biggest group of people, more people here in Jesus equals more lives changed. Now, that sounds good on paper, but it's not what they put in practice because there's no accountability, there's no expectations. Nobody in the, the congregation is able to serve or do anything. Everybody's paid staff. Everybody's professionals. And then they become just a product, and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're like, you know what? All this to keep this operation, to keep this machine going, we just got to have thousands of people. So, okay, come as you are and stay as you are. Yes, you can bring your wife this week and your girlfriend the next week. We're just happy that you're showing up, right? And they become so concerned with a volume of people that they're no longer talking about life transformation. But the truth is, if you are not any different than before you started attending church, if you are no different than before you knew Christ, the truth is you do not know Christ. You don't know Jesus. Now, and I'm not saying you don't still struggle with the same mess. I'm not saying you can't fall off the wagon. I can't, I'm not saying you don't struggle and, and mess up with sins. But the point is, if you have the living God living inside of you, and you've had for 20 years, and you've been week in and week out coming to church, you will look more like Jesus. You will be transformed. If that is not the case, the reality is you haven't had the Holy Spirit inside of you yet. Because guess what? We see in the Bible, each time the Holy Spirit dwells in somebody, a life is changed. Yes, when you first come to church, you come as you are. In fact, that's the only way you can come. 
I've met so many people, man, if I just, if I just come to church, you know, the whole bill would just catch fire because, you know, I'm so bad, I'll just catch fire. If I, I, and you don't understand, Pastor, and I'm, what I've done, and I, my life ain't straight, and I need to fix some things, and before I come, listen, that person will never come to church. If they wait to be perfect or holy before they come to church, they'll never make it. Because it's when you come in these walls, it's broken, and you receive Christ, and you slowly become better and more perfected in the image of Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, when you come to church, you come as you are. Sins and all, warts and all, flaws and all. Oh, but there's hypocrites at church. We're all hypocrites in the sense that we all want to be like Christ, but yet in times we all fail miserably. But at least we're trying. At least we have a thing we're striving for and we want to please, and, and yet we are closer to Christ than we were than when we first started. The truth is, if you're filled with the Spirit, you won't stay as you are. You will be transformed. So yes, Holland Baptist says the same things that every church in America says. You are welcome here. Church is a hospital for the sick, right? And for the sinners. We are all sinners saved by, by grace. Come as you are. We say those things and really mean them. There is no judgment if you're coming out from outside the world and you're wrapped up and riddled with sin. There's no judgment if you're a baby Christian and you're struggling in sin. But once you're here, once you're genuinely saved and have the Holy Spirit, we don't want you to stay that way. Unlike other churches, we're not satisfied with just your attendance here. We don't want you to stay as you are. We want to see you start sinning less. We want to not see you just get a spiritually uh, little patch, uh, one medicine and come back next week. No, we want you to see spiritually and totally healed. We want to see you transformed. We want to see you growing into the image of Jesus. So because of that, as a church, we have super high expectations for our membership. We expect you, if you're filled with God, we expect you to act like Him. We expect you to be like Jesus. We expect you to become more and more holy and righteous. We expect you to make a difference in this community. We expect you to serve on ministry teams and to be active in ministry work. We expect you to have a role at this church and to fill your obligations, fulfill them faithfully. And why do we expect so much out of you and the rest of the HBC family? It's because we know that if you are saved, you have the helper. You have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. Yes, we know we're all weak, but we know He's strong. Amen? Church, if you are saved, you have the same Holy Spirit inside of you that were inside Peter and Paul and John and James and yes, even Jesus Christ himself. So you better believe that if you have God the Spirit, if you have one of the Holy Trinity, if you have the Holy Spirit himself residing inside of you, don't you believe your life will be transformed? And so here at HBC, we expect... God filled people to act and live like it. If you have been transformed, we expect you to live the transformed life. And if the Spirit has come upon you, you will be transformed. Think about it, just like that upper room shook as the mighty Spirit came down from heaven, your life will be foundationally shaken and turned upside down once the Holy Spirit enters your life. As soon as the Holy Spirit entered those first believers, they immediately received transformation. They immediately received some gifts of the Spirit, as we see in our text in a moment. And they immediately started using what the Holy Spirit had given them. You see, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were instantly changed. They were instantly transformed. So if a local church like HBC is filled with the Spirit, then it means it will be filled with a group of transformed people people, a people who have been gifted by the Spirit for the purpose of being used by the Spirit to bring glory and honor to God the Father. A church that is filled with the Holy Spirit will be filled with a people living like Jesus. We have a power inside of us that cannot be stopped. 
We have a mighty wind inside of us that will blow through any obstacle. We will have a fire inside of us that cannot be quenched by any trial or tribulation. We will be a transformed people. The church, if it is a true spirit-filled church, will be made a majority of people who have been transformed by the spirit along with all the others that are being drawn in different levels along that way. Just like the people on the day of Pentecost came to worship as they were, but they left something different. If people are called by God, attend worship services week in and week out here at HBC, they too should leave as something different. A church that is filled with the Spirit will be filled with a changed people, a loving people, a holy people, a righteous people. And if you come here week by week and the Holy Spirit is inside of you, it is impossible for you not to change. It is impossible for you not to be transformed. You will be transformed. And as I look around this room, do you know what I see? I I see a lot of transformed people. So many of you are a totally different person than when you started coming to this church. And, and the person that I met five, six, seven years ago, whenever I met you, some of you just one or two. And that's the way it should be. Just a few years ago, some of the people at HBC were alcoholics. Some were addicts. Some of you were wasting your life by pursuing worldly dreams. Some of you were depressed and living in broken relationship after broken relationship. Some of you were trapped in a vicious cycle of fear and anxiety and mental illness. Some of you think you need a church, but you hated being dragged to church by your spouse. Some of you were baby Christians struggling to grow. Some of you were unfaithful Christians living in sin. Some of you were just religious people who didn't know Christ and just checking a box. Some of you were dead in sin and unbelievers. But look at you now. Look at how much you have grown. Look at how much you've been transformed. The Holy Spirit has transformed so many of you. And how did he do that work? He did that great work through the church, through Holland Baptist Church. You see, a spirit-filled church is a place of transformation. And that church will be made up of transformed people. Amen? Now let's look back at our text, all right? We're going to pick up with verse 5. And now I want you to notice the community's response to these transformed people, all right? To these spirit-filled people. Listen, picking up verse 5. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look... Are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we are born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Philgia and Pamphylia and Egypt and parts of Libya, join in Cyrene and um, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this be? Or whatever could this mean? And others said, they are full of new wine. The second truth that I want to point out today is is that once the Holy Spirit transformed the believers, the believers immediately made an impact in the community. I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit filled people immediately impact their community. And that is number two point here. The church will impact its community. In our text, we see that upon receiving the Holy Spirit, the church immediately left the four walls they were meeting in and went out into the community. They immediately left the comfort of their upper room and went out into the community. They were transformed, they were gifted, and then guess what? They were moving. A Holy Spirit 
Spirit-filled church will be led by the Spirit to move beyond the church walls and into the streets and neighborhoods in our surrounding areas. I want you to think back but in Acts 1, about we read about the, uh, uh, the disciples before the Spirit came down. You notice they weren't in their community. But they were God-fearing people, weren't they? They loved the Lord. They were praying. They were studying scriptures. They, they were loved one another, but they won't do anything in the community. It wasn't until the Holy Spirit came down that they were transformed and able to start transforming the community. And I want you to think about some of the previous churches you've been to. Whether it's the big mega churches that sell all about the dog and pony show, the experience. Whether it's the small churches that are just struggling. They're both are got people that love the Lord. The, the sermons might be good. The prayers might be good. The people might like each other and love each other and truly fear God. But you notice so many of them churches are doing nothing to impact their community. And a lot of those churches, when you go there and you say, man, this church is dead. Even if the worship's good, they're doing nothing. The reason is a lot of those churches, the majority of the people there are like the church before Pentecost. The Spirit's not in them. There's some Spirit-filled people there, but it's not a Spirit-filled congregation. And to have a Spirit-filled congregation, the majority of the individuals have to be Spirit-filled. You see, when a church is filled with the Spirit, they will go out into the highways and byways. They will go out into the countryside and transverse the back roads. They will go downtown to the city and walk down the busy sidewalks. In other words, they will impact all of their community, young and old, rich and poor, black and white. All will be impacted by a spirit-filled church. The church will leave its walls and go to where the people are. They will leave their walls and go and make an impact in other people's lives. Listen, a church will never fulfill the Great Commission. A church will never fulfill their purpose and mission if they never leave their building. 1 Peter 2.9 says this, You are, speaking of us, you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. We have been created, we have been chosen, we have been saved, we have been filled with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are the light of the world, right? And we are not to hide the light of Jesus by remaining constantly under the roof of our building. We are to shine the light of Jesus into every nook, into every cranny, into every crevice in our community. As the song says, this little light of mine, right? What's going to happen to it? I'm going to let it shine. A Holy Spirit-filled church will make an impact in its community by going out into the community. But I also want you to notice in our text that before the church even left the building, the community was already being drawn to the church. Look at verse 6. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. Now, who is the multitude here? The multitude is the community. It's all those who are outside of the church. And what was the sound? What was this drawing factor that drew them to the church? It was the sound of the Holy Spirit coming into the world. You see, the Holy Spirit made a whole lot of noise coming down from heaven and going into that upper room. That loud, localized Holy Spirit-induced windstorm around the believers was so loud that it attracted the community to the church. But I want you to notice, as the community inched closer and closer to the church, the wind died down, but yet the people continued to come to the church because another loud noise got their attention. 
And that was the noise of no longer the Holy Spirit on the outside of people, but the Holy Spirit inside of people, the Holy Spirit working through believers. The community, for the first time ever, heard the church. They heard 120 people loudly proclaiming the name of Jesus. The community heard 120 people praising and worshiping God, and that was so attractive to them that it drew them to them. And all this, though, the cry was a diverse group that spoke many languages. Everyone heard and understand the Christians as they talked about the mighty works of God in their own language. So what does these verses teach us? Well, it teaches us two things. Number one, it teaches us this. A spirit-filled church will attract people to the church. Think about this. Since we have a supernatural power, since we are different than the world, since we go against the grain in what is considered normal in our culture, since we boldly praise and serve Jesus, people will be supernaturally and naturally attracted to us. They will be attracted to the church. A church body that is spirit-filled will draw people to itself. So here at HBC, we have, we will, and we should attract people to us. Have you noticed on a weekly basis that we have new visitors, right? Have, and now some of these visitors are invited here. And, and by the way, y'all need to do a better job at inviting more people. And y'all are doing good, though, for the ones that are. Thank you. But when I talk to most of the people that find their way here, they don't know a single soul at this church. They came without being invited. How do they find this church in the middle of this place? The Holy Spirit invited them. The Holy Spirit drew them here. So if you're a first time or second time or third time or upteenth time visitor here, I want you to know something. You are here because of a divine appointment. Think about that. There was a million places you could have gone this morning. There were a million different things that you could have done. So how in the world did you find your way at this time, at this place this morning? I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit brought you here. The Holy Spirit draws people to the church he draws people to Christ, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for each of you at some time in your life, a current past, a distant past, that you were led here and brought here by the Holy Spirit. He draws people to His church. He draws people to Christ. A Spirit-filled church will attract people to itself. Second truth is this. A Spirit-filled church will move beyond their walls and into their community. If we are a people who truly love God, a people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will love the people in our community, even the ones who are extremely different than us. And why is that? It is because we're not normal. We have been transformed into a new creation. We have been born again. Therefore, we have a new heart and we have new desires. And this new heart and new desires will cause us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And we also have the Holy Spirit. We have God himself, the God who loves people living inside of us. So because of our new heart and because of the heart of the Holy Spirit, we, the church, will leave these walls and go out into our community because we love the people. A spirit-filled church will impact its community. Notice that I didn't say it should or it might or it has the potential to. I said it will. A spirit-filled church will make an impact on its community. Now, with all that said, I, I don't want you to get some unrealistic expectations. I want you to know that all of the community will not view the impact that we make on them as positive. And I briefly touched on this last week. When we go outside of the walls into our community, we will receive a variety of responses. Some folks will welcome us and appreciate us and love us and the impact that we make on them. On the other hand, some folks will reject us, will resent us, will ridicule us, 
and will hate us for the impact that we are making on them in the community. We'll also come, out, uh, come across people that somewhere in between, folks who are indifferent towards us, folks who are annoyed by us, some folks who think we're ignorant. Some folks who think we're old-fashioned. Some folks who think we're even bigots, right? Some folks who even think we're, we're crazy. As we leave these walls and impact our community, there will be an infinite amount of responses. Some positive, some negative, and some neutral. But the truth is, the response to us should not matter. What should matter is that we are making the kind of impact that a spirit-filled church is supposed to make. Amen? I want you to know that, also know this, not all of the people who the Spirit draws to church, not all the people who come to church will respond positively in a, or in a positive way to the impact we make in their lives. The truth is, anytime you have a, a field of wheat, you also have the enemy who sowed tares out there. You have weeds. So the enemy will also send people to break down, to scourge, to try to destroy. At the same time, you have people who are honestly seeking the Lord, who are honest, honestly seeking community, who seem to be coming for the right reasons. But yet they will still get mad, they'll still get upset, they still won't connect with the impact that we're making on their lives. And why is that? It's because people are broken. We're all broken. People are sinners. People are wicked. So when they come to church, when they're impacted by the gospel truth, sometimes instead of being convicted of their sins and turning to Jesus and repent, sometimes they want to kill the messenger, Right? Or they want to deny the message and just say, well, y'all are, are just judgmental or, oh, it's not about that and I'm perfect. I'm going to find a place that will edify and strengthen me and I'm uncomfortable with seeing my flaws and my weaknesses and my sin. So I'm going to put my head in the sand and find some place that would just entertain me. The, the point is, since we're all imperfect sinners, when we're impacted by Christ, when we're impacted by the Holy Spirit, some of the ways that we reach people out there, some of the people that I brought here, some of those ways will be positive, some will be negative, and some will be neutral, right? Some people, I honestly, you know, I'm like, you're here all the time, but there's no positive impact or negative impact. You're just neutral. And that's the reality. All churches has a combination of uh, wheat and tares, of spirit-filled people, people going to be who will one day be spirit-filled people, and all in between. So as we go out, as we spread the gospel, as we make an impact, yes, some folks will be amazed by Jesus and the gospel message, and it will lead them to repent, it will lead them to confess Jesus, it will lead them to become converts, and then it will lead them to grow and mature as a disciple of Jesus. But on the other hand, some folks who are drawn to us will get confused, they'll get mad, They'll get disappointed. They'll get downright hateful when the impact of Jesus impacts their lives in a way they don't like. Our text this morning shows these, these things. Verses 12 and 13 shows us that people were amazed. At the same time, they were totally perplexed and confused. Some of them even mocked church and said, look at them. They're just a bunch of drunks. Church, if we are spirit-filled uh, spirit filled. Folks will be drawn to us, and we will also leave the building and go to them. We will make an impact in our community. We will amaze some, we will confuse some, and we may even be called crazy drunks. But the truth remains, we will make an impact on our community. We will make a Christ-sized, Christ-shaped impact in our community if we are not leaving our church building, if we are not making an impact in the community, then the reality is we are not a spirit-filled church. If our church ever shuts its door and the community never notices, we are not a spirit-filled church. They will either love us or hate us, but if we're spirit-filled, they will know we exist, and they will know our mission, they will know we love them in spite of how they feel about us. A spirit-filled church will be a life in their community. They will be a blessing in their community. They will be a rock for their community to stand on. They will be an ambassador of Jesus in their community and they will make an impact. 
Listen, church, a spirit-filled, transformed people will make an impact on their community, and that impact will transform our community. It only makes sense a transformed people will have a transformative impact on others. So church, as we close our time together, I want you to know that here at HBC, we have, praise the Lord, a lot of spirit-filled people. And that means we have a lot of transformed people. And that means, as you can see, we have a lot of people making an impact in the community. And if you are one of those people, I want to thank you for being you. And I want to also encourage you to continue to make an impact for Jesus. Continue on with your transformation and becoming more and more like Jesus in every way. And I promise you that if we continue to be a spirit-filled people, if we continue to be transformed more and more into the image of Jesus, if we continue to make an impact for Christ in our community, then we will make an eternal difference in countless lives. Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you for your spirit. I thank you for that transformation that we have. I thank you for that day that it all changed. I thank you for saving us and for redeeming us. I thank you for that power that we have. Father, I just pray that we will be used by you in a mighty way. That we will... Be a transformed people who truly transform our community. And we do it for your glory and your honor and your praise. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now, I just talked about the church is collectively, but as we close up time and about to stand and sing, I just want you to examine your heart as an individual. Are you a transformed person? Are you making a Christ-like impact in your community? Of course, you're all making an impact. You can't help but make an impact on those around you. But are you making an impact where you can be mistaken for Jesus Christ? Are you leaving the footprints of Jesus in your life? If people follow you, would they be led to Christ? If we look at the Bible, we see there at the day of Pentecost, it was a day that everything changed. So have you had a day where everything changed in your life? Sometimes it's not a moment. Sometimes it's a season where all of a sudden you don't even know when you're in it. But all of a sudden you know as you're coming through it, you're like, I'm different. Jesus has started something beautiful in me and now and I want to respond to it and I didn't even see it. For others of you, it will be a drastic transformation. Listen, the Holy Spirit is God and He has power. If you're in Christ, if He's in you, you will be transformed. So if you've not had a day where everything's changed, I just urge you to make that day today. Today you can start the process. You can start your journey with God. You can start your eternity right now by just confessing your sins, by acknowledging Him as your Lord and Savior. By just surrendering your life and realigning yourself with God and just starting the journey to where you will become the person God created you to be. So if you need to come and just come to Jesus, come and be saved. As we sing this last song, I urge you to come down. If God has brought you in this time and this place with this divine appointment to just unite with this imperfect group of people, who serve a perfect God, to bring your gifts and your talents and your abilities, your natural gifts and your supernatural gifts to just unite with us, to strengthen this body, to be the part that we're missing, to make an eternal difference in this community, to align with us, to shoulder up with us, to huddle up with us, to sign up for the team, to join the army of Christ here at Holland Baptist Church. Whatever decision, if that's the one you need to make, now's the time. If you just need to come by yourself or come and pray for yourself or pray for a loved one or or pray with me or any decision that you need to make, now's the time. Listen to the Holy Spirit and respond. Please stand.